Okay, so hi everyone, welcome back to another week of Master Classes. Today we're going to be talking about 5 easy comps to play on the PB of set 11. So if you are watching this in the live class from the Fit Gamer server, um, feel free to ask any questions if they come to mind, either unmute your mic or type in the chat. I'll be able to help you there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely check out the description so you can join the Fit Gamer Training Grounds TFT server. Okay. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. First, I want to talk about why I chose easy comps to play. Basically, uh, at the start of a set, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So by picking quote unquote easier comps to play, you're able to focus less on the micro and focus more on the actual macro of the set. So be able to focus more on uh, the new augments, the new encounters, rather than the individual positioning of a unit or the individual itemization, etc. So table of contents for today. Five different comps we'll talk about. First one is just going to be Vertical Arcanist. Two different ways to play it, either the reroll version or the tempo version. Then we have Duelist, which is going to be now a reroll comp of the sets, as opposed to previous sets where you would be stabilizing around four cost carries. Heavenly reroll, Storyweaver reroll, and then last but not least, Invokers with our, with Lilia, sorry, that should be actually L, as our main carry. Then we'll have time for a Q&A and a reflection slash summary. Okay, so five easy comps to play on PBE. The first one is gonna be Arcanist. So it's gonna be vertical, vertical Arcanist. Uh, this set or this trait has been around for a while is basically just providing pure AP or pure ability power as the actual trait. Uh, more AP to the individual Arcanist and then less AP for those that are not on Arcanist but are still part of your team. Because this is an AP trait, most of our units, if not actually all of our units, are doing magic damage, and this is also a non-craftable emblem. However, you start, you are still able to get it off of augments because trait-based augments such as Arcanist uh, Crown or Arcanist Crest are back, and then maybe also off of a Carousel late game. So this is the Arcanist trait. It goes two, four, six, eight as our breakpoints, and then we're gonna going to get into what the board looks like. So we have two versions. We have like our early game, mid game board, and then our level eight board. Uh, early game, mid game board. First off, uh, this is going to this can be a reroll option. So there's two ways to really play this. We can either reroll mostly around our Lux. Uh, Zoe is extra, but it requires like an extra set of items and also a lot more gold. Most of the time, we'll just be rerolling Lux and then our front line, our Nico, and then Alawi if we can. So ideally, we get an Arcanist plus one. So either this is going to be our Arcanist crown or Arcan Arcanist uh, crest early. That way, we're able to play six Arcanists on level six, which is really good uh, because then we're just only playing Arcanist and then we're able to freely reroll on level six for Lux and Nico. The odds for two cost units have changed a bit. So before, on set 10, uh, it used to only go from 40 to 35% whenever you would go to level 6 to level 7. So it was actually quite alright to roll on level 7. However, now it goes all the way down to 30. So by having this Arcanist plus one, being able to stay level 6 and actually have a strong board on level 6, uh, we don't have to go from 40% chance of a 2 cost unit to 30%. We can just maintain the 40%, uh, get our 3 star Lux, our 3 star Nico, and then start pushing levels for either 7, and then we can start going for either our Alawi or our Zoe, or we can start playing more tempo, uh, getting Syndra as another carry, and then adding our Thresh for Faded. So that's the first option with our uh, with reroll. Uh, make sure we'll have our three item Lux, one mana gen, and then two damage, or at least Marlo for utility. And then our front line has um, well, Nico actually deals a decent amount of damage. So now BT is actually quite good on her. And then some extra tank items or a spark slash shiv. We need one of them either on a backline carry or on one of our frontline tanks. So that's the first part of how to play reroll. The second one is if we're just really tempoing um, and we're playing just like tempo board, we're not rerolling, we could play around Syndra. And then we can want to put in our Thresh, put in our Syndra for our three faded. And then ideally we, we are able to do both where we have this final board here where we have rerolled for our Lux and our frontline. And then we eventually go level eight, play our Syndra and our Thresh, we get faded in. And then this board is gonna be super strong, multiple carries, really strong frontline. Um, everyone is doing magic damage. So we are making really good use of our shred items like our spark and then maybe a shiv. And then we're able to go level nine for a five cost. So this is Vertical Arcanist, very strong. Um, the six Arcanist like spike is really big and you'll be able to start winning some rounds after that. Uh, but even like a four, or four Arcanist, if you have a pretty good constructed board, um, you'll be able to still perform well. 
So that's a quick intro it, into it. Uh, next for positioning. So let's say positioning as Lux first. So let's say we are the Arcanist player and we are looking to snipe the enemy carry. For those who do not know, Lux hits the farthest units and then hits the units uh, in between as well, like for damage. However, the more units she hits, the less damage she does uh, sub subsequently. And then also the first two units, uh, the first two units she hits are stunned. Regardless, we still want to be positioning opposite side whenever we're playing Lux of the enemy main range carry. So then we are able to still snipe them down. And this works really well if the enemy main range carry does not have any healing. Uh, that way, normally by like the second, maybe even third cast, um, the enemy main carry will be dead. And Lux casts quite often because of the porcelain trait um, being shared with Amumu. So she gets a lot of attack speed after her cast paired with the Shoujin because she has 75 mana. Means that she only needs to auto attack five times. And these are quick autos because we get attack speed. So a lot of casts, a lot of stuns, and a lot of damage. That also means uh, Morello is really good on her because she is able to hit a wide variety of units and apply that healing debuff. So that is how to position as Lux, but if you're positioning against Lux, so let's say this top board is, is us, um, and then this bottom board is the enemy board. Basically, you want to be either positioned middle or the same side as the enemy Lux and then you're, you're going to be doing this positioning if you see that the Lux player is in your pool if the Lux is not in your pool you don't have to worry about it but let's say you are uh, able to face them you either want to position in the middle or the same side now same side is really risky um but it's high risk high reward because if you position the same side as the enemy Lux remember because Lux uh, far, fires at the farthest enemy she's going to hit the farthest enemy so then this corner is going to be number one right and then she's going to hit the second aphelios here uh they, these are just filler units they could be like whatever but it's a ranged unit and then the third one is going to be over here so it's risky if it's the same side but high risk high reward um but the problem with this is if they fast swap after then we are now in the first situation uh where we do not want to be this corner aphelios so positioning in the middle is very safe uh, against Lux's or you can offset it and put your like main carry like off to one side but still not being targeted first. So that's how to position as Lux and position against Lux. And then best in slot augments to go with six Arcanists. Jewel Lotus 3 is the best or one of the best combat augments for almost all comps. It just provides you with so much damage. Uh, it's great uh, because we have a reroll aspect of being able to go for Lux. If we want to be able to reroll everything, including our Zoe and our Alawi, then going augments such as Shopping Spree or March of Progress on 2 1 can help us out a lot. Arcanist Crest and Crown is really good for helping us fit six Arcanists on level six, and then that way we could roll for our Lux and our Nico with a very stable board, with uh, Amumu as Arcanist, and also Amumu has a very good AP ratio. So putting uh, Arcanist Emblem on Amumu is quite good as well. Magic Wand, not so much for the bonus AP it gives, <clears throat> because we already gain so much AP from Arcanist. It's more so for the rod, because we're going to need infinite rods in this comp. Um, at least two rods for Lux, one rod for Spark, and then once we start itemizing our other units as well, they will require some rods as their main damage items. <clears throat> Mind over Manor is the training dummy um, Arcanist. It's the new new augment in set 11. You get a training dummy and it gets a lot of health depending on your Arcanist AP, uh, which is very good. And then last but not least, uh, binary slash buried treasure. Because this comp has the potential to have multiple carries, um, having multiple items or being able to um, three item multiple carries, which is binaries, uh, is really good. So look out for this augment. And then we can also like two item or tank and then get that third item from binary. So that is six Arcanist, or at least the vertical Arcanist um, comp. Very good, very easy to play. Uh, just keep an eye out for every Arcanist and then pick them up as you go and then decide whether to reroll or uh, tempo. And you're good to go. Um, biggest thing about this comp is positioning. So make sure that you're scouting a lot uh, with Lux and then swapping sides um, dependent on what corner you need to target, what corner you need to target with your Lux binding. Okay, so moving on, we're now going on to Duelist. So this trait has been around for a couple sets as well. Uh, basically, this is a pure combat trait where it gives the Duelist attack speed and damage reduction, and then and the attack speed increases up to 12 per auto attack. So the breakpoints, 2, 4, 6, 8, but once we get to the 6 and 8 breakpoints, that is when the DR, or damage reduction, starts coming into play. 
and it's a very good comp. Uh, it's mostly physical damage units. Folly Bear has a little bit of ability power, or, or sorry, for magic damage, but uh, he's mostly a magic tank, at least mid to late game. Early game can be a very good carry, um, but mostly physical damage. And then this is a non-craftable emblem. Uh, same thing, you could get a Duelist Crown, you could get a Duelist Crest, or get it off of Carousel late game or off a of Tome, but you cannot build this. So we're going to be going vertical duelist and re-rolling. Um, because this is a physical damage comp, we're going to require Sunder. So we want an even shroud on our main tank. Or if we have if, if we have to, we can build Last Whisper uh, on our main carry, which will be Tristana in this case. We're going to be wanting to play tempo early. Um, just play any early game board that is really strong. So if you have like snipers or you have like an ink shadow start early, it's very good. Basically, just play tempo. Um, because this is a three cost reroll, we're going to be wanting to go level seven. This will be on either three, five, or four, one. Three, five, if you're super rich. Or be so this is either like a, a two, one econ augments, or you're just like super streaking, or there's an econ galaxy. But most of the time, it will be four, one. Um, for level 7 and then you can stabilize and look for this board down here where you will be slow rolling on level 7. A couple little things you could play early uh, so this is like an option as I mentioned like Ink Shadow Opener you could play around Gnar uh, carrying your Leeson items you could also play around for Duelist or because Tristana is a Fortune Duelist unit you could play around Fortune. And then after your fortune cash out, then you can uh, cash out and then start transitioning into your actual duelist. Uh, we have one tank unit that we want to be itemizing. So either the Diana 3 or the Volley Bear. Uh, Diana is a very good tank unit. However, she is quite... Um, quite contested so if there's a lot of diamond players in the lobby you could just go for volley bear three instead and then put your sunder or your crown guard uh, on him because we need a way to kill rods in this comp and then on level eight we're going to be putting in either wukong or wukong or rakan and wukong or rakan and then replacing yasuo with irelia Last but not least, make sure you put Lee Sin in front of a valuable enemy carry. Um, not only does he stun, but he mana reeves, and it's very valuable. So either put this in front of an enemy melee carry or an enemy main tank. And then same side, our, our three package, which is going to be like our main tank, either Diana or Volibear, Lee Sin, and Tristana. So then we are able to really charge through one side of the enemy board. Let's see a couple questions here. Thoughts on Edge Knight slash BT Tech on Tristana. So her... Uh, Targeting has been changed from lowest health to current target. So now if you frontline Tristana, you're just insta-proccing Eon or insta-proccing BT. And then the same thing with, uh, is that the frontline Tristrat? That is now removed. Um, no longer do you have like a dive bomber Tristana. You just have a Tristana uh, jumping on the current target and then jumping to safety and continuing auto-attacking. So no more frontline Tristana. That was a fun tech a little bit on the beginning of PvE, but that is no more. So this is what the board looks like um, on level 7, you're going to be re-rolling, it's 40% chance for 3 cost units, so it should be quite easy to hit, and after Tristana 3 and Diana 3 slash Volibear 3, then you can start going level 8 and looking for a legendary unit to put in. Best install augments to go along with this duelist comp, Jewel Lotus 3, surprise surprise. Uh, because we are a re-rolling, shopping spree and march progress is extremely good here. Duelist Crest or Crown, then we can put this on Diana and even have eight Duelists as one of our win conditions uh, if we are able to find that Aurelia. And then also Diana is just extremely good unit with Duelist Crest or with Duelist Emblem on her. Extended Duel is the new Duelist augment. I believe it gives Omni Bamp and also starting uh, starting Duelist stacks onto Boots Duelist. Gifts from the Fallen. Tristana can actually like 1v9 uh, once she is fully stacked with Duelist. And then as long as she has some sort of healing on her, um, she is able to do some crazy clutches with like jumping around and kiting. So Gifts is very good. Combat Caster, Vampirism, Harmesis, and Idealism are also very, very good. So yeah, and that's, that's the Duelist comp. Uh, I think it's very... A very, very strong comp, and definitely give it a try if you have the chance. Okay, moving on, we are on our third comp now. Um, we are going to be talking about Heavenly Reroll. So if you have played previous sets and played the Guild trait, a Heavenly is essentially the previous set's Guild trait. So, and if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it to you right now. So uh, it seems pretty complicated, this trait. However, I'll break it down. Basically, we have our breakpoints at each number. So two, three, four, five, all the way up to seven. And each unit 
that is a heavenly provides a specific bonus once they're played. So like Kha'Zix provides crit chance, Malphite provides resistances, Nico health, etc. Now, once it is activated, so at least like two heavenly units are activated, then uh, every member of your team will receive a unique stat bonus based off the units that are played. So here's our example, right? Once say once two heavenly is activated and we have a two star Gahal Zix, then normally uh, they would grant 10% attack or 10% crit chance for the entire board. Uh, but because he is a two star, they grant 50% 50% more. So then a two star Kha'Zix with two heavenly would grant 15% crit chance for the entire board. And then it goes up to 90% more, so 19% once you have a three star. So that is where the strength of this board really comes once you start getting to like the five, six, seven, along with your three stars. Hence this is a reroll. Our like crit chance is gonna be really high, like resistance is gonna be really high, health, attack damage, ability power, attack speed, and ideally we are going to want to get an emblem. Uh, not only to get seven heavily easier, but also get that omni vamp. So then we basically have every unit with insane stats, and we can build this emblem with a spat and a cloak. I see quick question for the uh duelist comp. I think I'll come I'll come back to that at the very end, uh, just to keep the video going. So that's a quick intro into Heavenly Reroll. Um, then our early game board, because this is going to be reroll, we're going to want to not level early and just naturally level and ma maximize as much early economy as possible. Uh, also, this is mainly a physical damage comp, so we also want to have some form of Sunder, uh, mostly even Shroud on our frontline Nico. We're going to start slow rolling once we have 50 gold on levels 4 and 5, and we're going to want to 3 star as many heavenly units as possible. Uh, Soraka is a bit tougher, 3 cost units, also is very expensive, especially early. So for now, just focus on Kha'Zix, Nico, Kiona, and Malphite with our physical like assassin items on Kha'Zix and our tank items on Nico. Nico is a really good tank. Recently, she got buffed even more. So not only does she have damage reduction, she also has healing, and then she has all the stats from heavenly, and it's just very, very good. Once Malphite and Kha'Zix are 3 star, then you can start pushing level 6 for Nico and Kiona because then on level 6 you'll have a 40% chance of seeing a 2 cost unit. And because this composition is really gold hungry, definitely check out and try to stay on Econ regions if you like this comp or if you just land on Econ region then this comp is applicable. So like gold subscription is really good. Uh, if you stand on like the 2 star 1 cost region or uh, then you will... Actually, sorry, I'm not sure if this is encounter, but there's a scenario where you get a two star one cost unit, and if it's like a Malphite or like Best in Slot at Kha'Zix, then you have a chance of going heavenly reroll from that spot. Uh, keep an eye out for any stage two econ augments that can help you out, and any stage two econ encounters, even like the encounter that gives you some uh, free rolls, is really good for this comp. So that's the early game uh, comp uh, on level six. This is going to be your board once you put in Reaper and you get a bit of a spike here. And eventually this is the capital board. We add in Kane and Morgana. So Kane over Kindred. And then we add in Morgana and Wukong. And we have seven heavenly, heavenly ideally with a spat. And we have Ghostly, Reaper, Sage uh, for extra Omni Vamp. And this is a very strong board. Okay, uh, best in slot augments for Heavenly is going to be Jewel Lotus 3, as usual, uh, Heavenly Crest or Crown, Combat Caster, Vampirism, Hermesis, Idealism, and then Divine Rolls is the Heavenly trait specific uh, augment. And so if you get Divine Rolls, then you could definitely have a spot for Heavenly Reroll. So very good comp. Um, the hardest part is going to be like the mid game transition because there's a big gap between like their early game rolling into our level 9 capped. Uh, so. The sooner you hit, the better that we can start pushing levels, start trying to get that cane over Kindred, start getting that Morgana in, and then eventually on level 9, add in that Wukong. Uh, oh, sorry, one more thing. Positioning wise, uh, make sure you're same side, the Kha'Zix and uh, same side, the Kha'Zix and the Nico. Uh, so then you have your main tank, and then your Kha'Zix is not getting targeted first. Uh, even though it has Edge of Knight, you don't want it to be up here and then getting procced right away. Uh, so make sure you second row them and then. Uh, have it on the same side as your armor tread or armor reduction. Okay, so that is Heavenly Reroll. Moving on to our fourth one here is going to be Story Weavers. So, Story Weavers is the summons trait of Set 11. Basically, when you activate this trait, you summon a movable Kale unit, and this will be in the back line. Um, it's just a back line unit. If you put it in the front line, it will just die. It's not that tanky, so that's why the back line. And then also the actual Story Weaver units will get a small health stat increase, but it's not that much, like 6100, but still something. And then this emblem is craftable with a spat and a chain. 
Now the actual the hero or like Kale the summon has a different effects once you reach different breakpoints, but then also as you reach different breakpoints and the, and the story weaver star levels, um, she also gets stronger. But the actual effects, uh, I don't have them memorized, and also I can't find them online because it's so new. But supportive effects, you have a chance. It will give you a little armory where you could choose uh, between options one, two, and three. And then I know for the first one, it's either Kale gives attack speed to adjacent units. The second one, I think, is ability power to adjacent units. And then the third one is, I think, shred and sunder. So most of the time, <clears throat> and unless they change it in the future, you will almost always want to take the attack speed ones. <clears throat> excuse me so at least for the supportive effect uh just to give your backline more attack speed and then the combat effect number five or five store reaver is either more attack speed scaling on kale so either like a rage blade or like a wider cone so scaling is better and then the seven it's debatable uh either the revive or the more uh more damage so but definitely three and five uh stick with the attack speed ones and then seven and ten uh we're not sure yet Okay, so uh, this is a Story Weaver reroll comp, remember? So we are going to be rerolling. We're going to be rerolling our Sivir, Garen, our Riven, and our Zyra if we have the items for her uh, or if we're very rich. But mostly focus on Riven, Garen, oops, Riven, Garen, and our Sivir. Uh, this is mainly a physical damage composition, so we need Sunder, either like a Last Whisper on our Sivir or an Even Shroud on our main tank, Garen early. And then same thing, um, just maximize your early econ as much as possible and natural level instead of pumping levels. And then once you hit 50 gold, you can start slow rolling for your Sever, Riven, and your Garen. Uh, look for econ regions such as the previous heavenly, so like gold subscription um, or any stage 2 econ. And then also search for a spat because with a spat plus chain, uh, we are able to fit 7 story weaver without having to 5 the 5 cost Irelia, which can be really hard to find. So then on level 7, we could play 7 story weaver and our kale is going to be a super kale and it will be a very strong board. <clears throat> So after we've hit our Riven, Sivir, and Garen, we're going to start pumping levels. We can add in Diana for Sage to pair along with our Zyra. Give our frontline some Omni Vamp and our backline some extra damage. And then eventually we're going to cap out on level 9 by adding, uh, or sorry, by playing Irelia. If we have a Spat, uh, then even better, we can drop Zoe, because Zoe doesn't really fit into this composition that well. Uh, no Arcanist, and we're not really putting any items on her if she doesn't have a lot of Arcanist available. And we could play Zaya to mix with Trick Shot uh, with her Sivir. And then she's a Dragon Lord, so we could fit in our Dragon Lord Lee Sin with Duelist with Irelia. And then Diana is already a Dragon Lord. So this is going to be our capped up board level 9 if we do have a Spat. Spat. And then if we don't have a spot, then unfortunately we can't play Lee Sin and we have to play the Zoe. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, best in slot augments for Story Weaver, Jewel Lotus 3, uh, the actual crest or crown for Story Weaver, uh, Combat Caster. These are just generic combat augments that are very good. Idealism. And then Call to Adventure is the Story Weaver specific. Uh, the story we were specific specific augments and then grim harvest is the reaper specific augment and i realized i did not change the photos so this is not uh the story we were reroll board it should be this one here uh my bad also i see lots of rerolls yes uh so far the comps have been very reroll heavy uh reroll is quite strong on the pb right now but it's mostly these are like the easier comps to play uh but a non non reroll comp for our very last one is going to be vertical invokers where lilia is going to be our main carry uh, invokers such as previous sets is the mana gen trait so basically the actual individual invokers gain a lot more mana at the four and six breakpoints but the overall there is still team-wide mana uh, is just a lot less this is an uncraftable emblem and it looks like this however you can still find it in the crest crowns and the off, off a carousel or tomes so here we go, we have our first, or well, technically our second, if we're playing um, Syndra just with tempo. Uh, but here is our first standard comp where, we're, where we are stabilizing around 4 cost carries on level 8. So because we're not rerolling, just play a standard early to mid game board. Um, anything tempo, so like a mythic opener is very easily transferable. Um, with like our, or with our Nico, Kog'Maw, and Trogath having mythic, and then we're just playing around our Diana Janna. This is just an example, just play your strongest board, kill as many units, hopefully win streak, and save as much HP and gold as possible. 
Invokers is going to be a purely magic damage comp, so we're going to need Shred. This can be either in the form of Shiv or through Spark. Um, although Alune does provide Shred and Annie provides uh, healing reduction, it's still good to have a backup uh, because Alune won't shred the entire board and Annie won't, healing, won't heal cut the entire board as well. Uh, once we get to four invokers that's going to be i believe 30 mana or okay i believe it's been changed um i believe it's oh sorry it has been changed back it was 30 but now they changed it back to 20 uh but 20 mana every three seconds and because lilia has a mana bar of 50 uh basically every three every three seconds she estimates attacks once every three seconds a little bit less uh but she'll basically get to 30 after three seconds and then the 20 mana from four invoker will hit and we will reach this magic number 50. so basically after four invoker is activated lilia doesn't need any mana items uh so it's best to not build any mana items early and then when we transfer over to Lilia we could just build three main damage items which is going to be very good. Uh, Gunblade is ex extremely good on Lilia because she casts so often and then we could do a mix of either Rabadons, Giant Slayer, or Morello. Okay uh, this is going to be a level 8 board so either on 4-2 if we're super rich or 4-5 if we're not that rich we're going to be leveling to 8 and rolling down for this board. If we don't find Set which is going to be very reasonable he's a 5 cost unit we could just play an Alawi instead to keep our Warden active because Nautilus is going to be one of our two main tanks um, a other one being Annie. And then on level 9 we can add either Rakan or Wukong for our Dragon Lord or our Sage. So this is going to be our board. Um, in this case, I'd actually recommend positioning opposite side the enemy carry with Lilia. Um, she's 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 a super crank, so just stay alive as long as possible, and she will just keep casting. She'll keep healing the entire board, and you just don't want her to randomly die at the very start. Uh, her single target damage is not that great, so hence the same side. Uh, even if she targets the enemy main carry somehow, um, she might not kill it, and she might get bursted down. But yeah, so this is the 6 Invoker board, super strong, uh, everyone will be casting very often, and it's just really good. And then best in slot Aukman's for this comp, Jewel Lotus 3, uh, if we're able to get our Invoker Crest or Invoker Crown. And then Combat Caster, Vampirism, Harmasis, Mana Shield is the Invoker specific trait. And then Magic Wand, uh, not only because we need a lot of rods, especially for Lilia, so we need at least like minimum 4, sometimes even 5 if we're putting the Morello on Lilia as well. Uh, but Invokers, remember, is a purely Mana Gen related trait there's no ap involved at least not yet uh in previous invoker sets they've added like an eight invoker breakpoint that gave ap but for now there's no ap so being able to get some uh, ability power onto the invokers is extremely valuable okay and that is it uh i still remember there is a duelist question which i will answer right after uh, but i'll just summarize for the video real quick so there are five comps five easy comps that i talked about today uh arcanus either playing around lux reroll or syndra and just going tempo the duelist tristana comp heavenly reroll story re story reaver reroll that one's a tw tongue twister and then invoker is lilia uh, and the point of playing these easy comps is be able to just know already what you're playing and the general items the general positioning etc your general game plan so then you can focus on learning the new augments that come um getting used to the new encounters that happen and just focusing on macro like scouting instead of the small micro so that has been it for the for the video uh thank you for watching and see you next time